So I've had a long-standing interest in the discipline of anthropology, and uh, some of my ventures into it with absolutely no formal academic training at all, I should say. Um, some of my ventures into it have been pretty, um, have gone well, and other times I found I've gotten into a book and just sort of found myself in very deep water. And uh, this is one of the latter cases, but um, I still wanted to review this book because I thought it was really thought-provoking, and uh, I did write a review of it, so I wanted to post it. Um, the book is called Culture, the Anthropologist's Account by Adam Cooper. Again, you'll see it in the, uh, in the little icon you click on to see the video. Um, as Adam Cooper says, uh, the core of this book is an evaluation of what has been the central project in post-war American cultural anthropology. So what he's interested in here, first and foremost, is cultural anthropology, not physical anthropology or biological anthropology. More explicitly, in the first part of the book, he details the French and German ideals of culture that grew out of the Enlightenment. Uh, part two... Uh, which is called Experiments, looks at how uh, Clifford Gertz, David Schneider, and Marshall Salins, respectively, have construed anthropologies of culture in response to various intellectual influences. As he explains in uh, the introduction, he lived through South Africa during the apartheid, when the very concept of culture was used to legitimize the most inhumane violence and racism imaginable. Because of this, uh, Cooper is very much a skeptic when it comes to any kind of belief that the use of the word culture communicates any objective essential quality about people or the way that they live their lives. As I hinted at above, the argument starts in Europe, um, in, in the, uh, the Enlightenment, basically, and migrates across the Atlantic Ocean. Cooper suggests that German intellectuals, especially uh, Karl Mannheim, uh, Karl Jaspers, and uh, Thomas Mann more recently, but uh, the concept dates back to Herder even in the 18th century, believed in uh, Kultur, or Bildung, a kind of cultured state by way of a process of education and spiritual development, which is bounded in time and space and is coterminous with a national identity. The French version of culture, with its haughty uh, transnational cosmopolitanism and materialism, was perceived to be a direct threat to local distinctive cultures, which is more what the German concept of Bildung is all about. Cooper then goes on to detail uh, Talcott Parsons' conception of culture as a tripartite endeavor between the psychologist, anthropologist, and sociologist, each of whom would understand culture as a semiological system of how we use symbols. He calls Gertz a Parsonian and takes him to task for analyzing signs and symbols outside of social structures. He gives a detailed account of Gertz's hermeneutical account of the Balinese cockfight in his book The Interpretation of Cultures, suggesting that Gertz's lack of sociological concern in his anthropology leaves only an idealist approach to interpretation, which is radically separated from cultural conditions. David Schneider, the second anthropologist Cooper takes up, is known for his study in kinship relations, specifically. However, he completely divorced this pursuit from anything like an idea of relationship or bloodlines. It should be noted that this is a fairly extreme version of relativism um, that not even many anthropologists adopt, and Cooper goes to lengths to point this out. Schneider makes the somewhat peculiar statement that, quote, since it is perfectly possible to formulate the cultural construct of ghosts without actually visually inspecting even a single specimen, this should be true across the board and without reference to the observability or non-observability of objects that may be presumed to be the reference of the cultural reference. For Schneider, 
culture is wholly symbolic and therefore almost necessarily wholly arbitrary. Uh, the best part of the chapter on Marshall Salins, another uh, quite well-known uh, American anthropologist, is Cooper's retelling of Salins' debate with uh, uh, Gananonth Obiskiare. Uh, I can never pronounce his name. Um, he's a he's at Princeton. He's a professor of anthropology, and he got in a quite well-known debate with Marshall Salins in the 80s, I believe. Uh, at the heart of the debate was uh, the nature of rationality of native peoples. Uh, specifically, uh, the debate focused on Captain Cook and his um, landing at the Hawaiian Islands and his uh, interactions with uh, the native Hawaiian people. Obias Kere uh, maintained that anything short of admitting that native people and Westerners and Westerners think similarly is another way of saying they are hopefully different, irrational, and uncivilized. Salins, however, holds that the rationality of native peoples is wholly and completely unknowable to those in the Occident. The closing chapters of the book are pretty scathing rebukes of postmodernism, especially its influence on the American anthropological tradition in the 1980s and the 1990s, claiming that it has a, quote, paralyzing effect on the discipline of anthropology. The 20th century has certainly given the reader plenty of reasons to look askance at the very notion of culture. However, I'm not so sure I'm ready to completely do, with it, do away with it as a very, ex very powerful explanatory tool, no matter how diaphanous it may occasionally seem. I would definitely recommend this book for anyone interested in trends in 20th century American cultural anthropology and especially its historical roots going all the way back to the uh, Enlightenment, as I said before, and the intellectual genealogies behind those roots. Whatever conclusions you draw about culture and what it means, um, this book is is willing and, and ready to challenge them and will do so very thoughtfully.